Video Lecture 4G, Introduction to Redox Reactions. So far, we've only looked at acid-base reactions. In an acid-base reaction, electron sharing is changes between the reactants and the products. Other, another type of reaction is a redox reaction, which involves the transfer of electrons from one element to another. For a redox reaction to occur, two processes must take place. The first process is oxidation. One species must lose electrons. These electrons are picked up by another element, resulting in the reduction of that element. A good example of a redox reaction is the reaction that caused the Statue of Liberty to turn green. The Statue of Liberty was constructed out of copper. However, over a few decades, the copper reacted with the oxygen in the atmosphere to produce copper 2 oxide. The copper 2 oxide is what caused the Statue of Liberty to turn green. In this reaction, copper goes from having no charge to having a plus 2 charge. Since it lost electrons to become more positive, we can say that the copper was oxidized. The electrons lost by the copper were gained by the oxygen, causing it to go from having no charge on its atoms to having a minus 2 charge on the product side. This means that oxygen was reduced. There are a few other terms that are helpful in describing a redox reaction. The first is we can identify an oxidizing agent. The oxidizing agent contains an element that was reduced, which results in the oxidation of an element in another species. In our example reaction, oxygen is the oxidizing agent. It goes from having a zero to having a minus two charge, indicating that it picked up electrons from another source. That other source was the copper. In the process of oxygen gaining electrons, it caused the copper to become oxidized. We can also identify a reducing agent. Reducing agents usually contain an element that is oxidized, which resulted in the reduction of another species. In our sample reaction, copper is the reducing agent. Copper lost two electrons, which were picked up by the oxygen, causing the oxygen to be reduced. Therefore, we can identify copper as a reducing agent. It is easy to see the differences in charges for ionic compounds involved in chemical reactions, using these charges to identify if a redox reaction has occurred. However, this is a little bit more difficult in molecular species, since no atom has a net charge. This is where oxidation numbers become useful. Oxidation numbers are a bookkeeping method used to keep track of electron movement in redox reactions, regardless of the, the reactants and products being charged as ionic compounds or, unchar or no, no charge for molecular reactions. For single atoms or monatomic ions, the oxidation number is simply equal to the charge. This is very similar to, to assigning ionic charges in chemical and ionic compounds. However, for molecular compounds, no atom has a net charge. So for molecular species, we pretend that we break the molecule up into complete ions. Using our oxidation number rules, we assign those atoms fictitious charges. In this way, we can see which element changed charge or oxidation number to determine whether it's been reduced or oxidized. There are a couple of rules to assigning oxidation numbers. The first is very similar to the rules that we use to write chemical formulas for ionic compounds. This is that the sum, sum of all the oxidation numbers, or our fake charges, must equal zero in a compound. 
If we are assigning oxidation numbers for elements in a polyatomic ion, the charge has to equal the charge on the ion. Or the sum of the oxidation numbers must equal the charge on the ion. Here are a few rules for assigning oxidation numbers to elements in compounds or in their elemental form. The first rule applies to free elements or elements not atoms not combined with other atoms to form a compound. The oxidation number of, free, of atoms in a free element has to equal zero, or the atoms do not have a net charge. Here are a few examples. Free metals, such as copper or sodium, would have an oxidation number of zero. There are some elements that form molecules in their, in their elemental form. These examples include hydrogen and chlorine, who form, which form diatomic molecules. All of the oxidation numbers in that, for the atoms in that molecule will equal zero, since it's a free element. Sulfur, on the other hand, forms an eight-membered ring out of sulfur atoms. Once again, none of these atoms will have an oxidation number that's not zero. There are no exceptions to this rule. The second category are monatomic ions, single atoms that carry a charge. The oxidation number for monatomic ions are simp is simply the charge on the ion. For example, sodium plus would have an oxidation number of plus one. Chlorine will have, a, as an ion, has a oxidation number of minus one. And copper two plus has a oxidation number of plus two. There are no exceptions to this rule. The third category is fluorine. No matter what type of compound fluorine is involved with, it will always have a minus one oxidation number. For example, the ionic compound sodium fluoride has a fluorine atom with a minus one charge and therefore a minus one oxidation number. Hydrogen fluoride is a, is a molecular compound. However, in this molecular compound, the, the fluorine will still have a minus one charge oxidation number. There are no exceptions to this rule. The last two rules in, involve hydrogen and oxygen, atoms that are commonly combined with others to form compounds. For hydrogen, the oxidation number for most in, for hydrogen in most compounds will, will be plus one. An exam, two examples are shown here. In hydrochloric acid or the hydrogen chloride molecule, hydrogen has a plus one charge or oxidation number. For, car, for, for methane or CH4, hydrogen also has a plus one oxidation number. There is an exception. When hydrogen is combined with a metal, such as in the case of sodium hydride, the oxidation number will be minus one. The last rule is for oxygen. For most compounds, oxygen has a minus two oxidation number. Here are some examples. In the ionic compound copper two oxide, oxygen will have a minus two charge and thus a minus two oxidation number. In the molecular compound carbon dioxide, oxygen also has a minus two oxidation number. There is an exception. If oxygen occurs in a peroxide, for example, hydrogen peroxide, the oxidation number for, for oxygen will be minus one. Let's look at some examples of how to use oxidation numbers. The first example is we'll simply assign oxidation numbers to each element in cobalt 2 phosphate. We can identify this as an ionic compound. So the first step can be to dissociate this into this compound into ions. For cobalt 2 3 or Cobalt 2 phosphate, this means that we'll dissociate the compound into cobalt 2 plus 
in the phosphate ion, which has a minus 3 charge. This allows us to easily assign oxidation numbers to the cobalt. Since it has a plus 3 charge, its oxidation number will also be plus 3. Now we have to assign oxidation numbers to phosphorus and oxygen. Since the, the phosphate ion is not, does, not have, does not have a peroxide, we can assign oxygen with a minus 2 charge. To, to determine the oxidation number for phosphorus, we can apply a more algebraic method. We'll let x be the oxidation number for phosphorus. Then we'll add on 4 times the oxidation number for oxygen, since there are 4 oxygen atoms in the phosphate ion. x plus the, oxidation, the 4 times the oxidation number for oxygen must end up equaling minus 3, the charge on the phosphate ion. If we, do, if we take the product of 4 and minus 2, we'll end up with minus 8. This means that x minus 8 has to equal minus 3. And then we can find that x is plus 5. Therefore, the oxidation number for phosphorus in cobalt 2 phosphate is a plus 5. So to summarize, the oxidation number for cobalt is plus 2. The oxidation number for phosphorus is plus 5, and the oxidation number for oxygen is minus 2. Here's another example of how to use oxidation numbers. We can use oxidation numbers to determine the oxidizing and reducing agents in reactions. We start by assigning each atom present in the balanced chemical equation an oxidation number. Sodium iodide is an ionic compound. Therefore, the charge on the two atoms in the compound will just equal their charges. So we can assign sodium an oxidation number of plus 1, and iodide an oxidation number of minus 1. For hypochlorous acid, we can first assign the hydrogen an oxidation number of plus 1, and the oxygen an oxidation number of minus 2. Therefore, we, we can determine that the oxidation number of the chlorine in hypochlorous acid is a plus 1. This assignment allows all the oxidation numbers to add up to 0, since hypochlorous acid is a neutral compound. For the product side, sodium iodate turns out to be an ionic compound. We can assign the sodium, therefore, a plus 1 charge. For the iodate ion, we know that the oxygens must be minus 2, since we don't have a peroxide. To make all the oxidation numbers add up to 0, iodide must have a plus 5 oxidation number. Now we're left with hydrochloric acid, a binary acid. In our binary acid, hydrogen will have a plus 1 oxidation state, and chlor chlorine will have a minus 1 oxidation state. If we examine our oxidation numbers, we can easily identify what has been oxidized and what has been reduced. If you look at iodide, iodine, it goes from having a minus 1 oxidation number to having a plus 5 oxidation number. The oxidation number gets more positive, therefore we can say that iodide has been oxidized. Since ox iodide has been oxidized, this means that the sodium iodide caused another element to get reduced. Therefore, we can identify sodium iodide as the reducing agent. Now we need to look for an element that was reduced. If you look at chlorine, it goes from having a plus 1 oxidation number to having a minus 1 oxidation number. Therefore, it became reduced going from a po more positive oxidation number to a more negative oxidation number. It being reduced, it caused another species to lose electrons. This means, this means that the hypochlorous acid ends up being the reducing agent, oxidizing agent. 